begin with breaking news. And that breaking news tonight, stunning images coming out of Hawaii with devastating wildfires tearing through Maui. Video showing those flames burning through homes and a shopping center in the historic town of Lahaina. Residents forced to evacuate, some even fleeing into the sea. Video showing smoke surrounding boats and evacuees heading away from the island. Tonight, two flights from Maui landing at the Sacramento International Airport. Some of those passengers speaking to KCRA 3 News. California, we're used to that kind of stuff, but why we don't get fires like this? Yeah, tonight we're getting a better idea of the damage caused after the fire started last night. Thanks for joining us at 10. I'm Ty Steele and I'm Andrea Flores. Three separate wildfires are burning on Maui. One of those burned much of the historic town of Lahaina. The county of Maui's mayor says they now know at least six people killed in the fire and the number of fatalities could rise. At least two dozen people have been injured by the fire. Thousands more evacuated and more than 270 structures destroyed or damaged. Wind driven flames took people by surprise. So we thought we were okay, but then the wind came, the gas stations blew up, everything caught fire by the brush, and then we just had to evacuate. It was watching the entire, the entire town burn from the ocean. All structures along the shoreline were fully engulfed, um, watching fuel tanks and other things that were blowing up. The strong winds have been a major factor in the fire spread. So for now, more on what's happening on the islands weather wise. Let's go to Chief Meteorologist Mark Fina. What are you seeing, Mark? Well, I'm going to focus on the area around Lahaina on, on Maui. As you just heard, there are other fires burning. But the thing about the fire that started last night and continued somewhat into the day today was the area that it, it struck. So here is where Lahaina is. Here is the, the west coast of Maui. And then above it is the mountains. And all of this is vegetation. It's most mostly dry grass and that sort of thing. And so you had these strong downslope winds that were gusting over 40 miles an hour. So that once a fire started in here, it spread into the populated areas. Let me zoom in on this a little bit more. So here's the beach area and there's the marina and you can see how densely packed this is. This is all residential in here. And then this is the area that is quite famous in Lahaina. Lots of restaurants and shops and that sort of thing. Let me zoom in on this a little bit more because the one thing you've been hearing from a lot of folks that are in the area is that, well, some of them had to actually jump into the ocean. Well, as you can see, there's no beach here. What there is is this is Front Street right in here, and that right there is an area of shops. All of this is burned. Many of the structures in inland as well are burned, but this burned all the way to the ocean, which is why some people had no choice but to go into the water. Go a little bit farther to the south. Some of you may be familiar with the historic Banyan tree that is right here, right near the harbor. That I've, I've seen reports that the Banyan tree is still standing. Others say that it has burned. But either way, you see where the harbor is, but all of this area too was burned. So it gives you an idea of just where this fire went and how much destruction there is in the town of Lahaina. Back to you. All right, Mark, thank you. And many of those forced out of their homes are staying in shelters tonight. This was the scene at the shelter at Maui High School. Thousands of people are, of course, displaced by the fires. Some who have lost everything are moved by how the community is coming together. Yeah, it's it's um it's like a really like beautiful outpouring of love right now. And it's really wicked to see the community come together just to make sure that like an entire town is okay. Cuz um we're not <laughs> The Hawaii Convention Center in Honolulu is also being used as a shelter. And these deadly fires have also left thousands of people stranded at local airports. The main airport in Maui was sheltering around 2000 travelers who had their flights canceled because of the flames. Many of the travelers had just arrived to the island but are now displaced with no way to leave. I mean, just the fact that it was spreading so fast and we didn't really know what was going to happen. And then, of course, like losing your stuff and not really knowing, you know, where you're going to go for the night. I went out to Sacramento International Airport tonight to talk to people who had just landed from Maui, and many of them were told to evacuate the island in the middle of the night. One man tells me he helped build commercial structures in Lahaina and says all of them are now burned to the ground. It's tragic. I mean, the Pioneer Inn, the oldest hotel there in Lahaina, will never be rebuilt. I mean, it's never going to be the same as it was. So it's, it's pretty tragic for Hawaii. Monday, our power went out, and then Tuesday, we woke up to seeing, like, just smoke and fire everywhere. 
Um, we thought it was contained, but then it must have jumped the highway and it got really close. About midnight last night, they told us, hey, be ready to evacuate about 3 a.m. We got evacuated. Some of the passengers we spoke with at the airport described the fire area as, quote, a war zone. Makes sense. For the latest on the Maui wildfire, the efforts to contain the damage and the impacts on travel, go to the KCRA3 mobile app.